Welcome to Lamar City Council Chambers located at 429 C Street. This is the March 19th meeting. Um, please silence elect all electronic devices as a courtesy to those in attendance. If you could please stand for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, it's going to be led by Mr. Joe Kootenai. Let us pray. Living God, we thank you for the opportunities you give us to come together, Father. We ask at this time you would be with the leadership of our city, be with the mayor, council members, the lawyer, and of course, the manager. Watch over them, Father, and give them the discernment, give them the wisdom it takes to run this city, Lord, as they look forward, as we move forward as a city, as a body. And we give you praise for being a God that knows us and loves us right where we're at. In your son's name, we all pray. Amen. Amen. Are you going to lead the salute to you? Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <clears throat> Councilmember Garza? Present. Councilmember Lyons? Here. Councilmember Orth? Present. Mayor Pro Tem Gornick and Mayor Mathis. Here. Thank you. <clears throat> Agenda approval, additions, and or deletions. Um, Mayor, I'm going to pull item two from the closed session, the significant exposure litigation. That item's not needed tonight. Thank you. Moving on to study session, item 1-1, audit report for end for year end ended June 30th, 2023. Ms. Valdez. Thank you, Jocelyn Valdez, finance manager. Um, we just want to go over the report this year. Um, our auditors, we've moved over to Bryant Jolly, um, completed our fiscal 23 audit. Uh, everything went well. Uh, this is our second year with a no finding no negative um, audit. So I will turn it over to Mr. Jolly to go over. Good evening, Mayor and members of the City Council. Thank you for having me here tonight. As Ms. Valdez uh, mentioned, my name is uh, Ryan Jolly uh, from the firm of Bryant Jolly CPA. This is our first year doing the uh, audit for the City of Lemoore, so we thank you for that opportunity. I'll go over a few highlights and then I can address any specific questions you might have. Um, as mentioned, we're presenting tonight the audit for the city of Lemoore for the fiscal year end of June 30, uh, 2023. Just beyond the table of contents is the independent auditor's report. This is where we issued an unqualified opinion. Uh, that's a clean opinion, meaning that we found the city's books and records to be in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. Uh, within that independent auditor's report, there's some different information on the overall responsibilities of the auditor and also of the city. Also some uh, additional information on required supplementary information. And then finally, um, an opinion on the government auditing standards. Uh, which has to do with us looking at internal controls of the city. Um, we issued a uh, clean opinion on that as well, not identifying or finding any uh, specific significant deficiencies or material weaknesses in the city's internal controls. Getting into the body of the financial statements, I'll just jump to some of the, the main funds um, that are usually of most interest. On page nine is the general fund of the city. Overall, the city, the general fund had a net increase in fund balance of just over 2.5 million, bringing the total fund balance to just over 7.6, 17.6 million. Um, so uh, general fund is, um, is healthy and had a, a net increase in net fund balance this year. The other ones that um, I'd mention are the enterprise funds, since these operate off of user charges on page 15. You'll notice that each of the uh, enterprise funds had an increase in net position. All of those funds are operating as intended as well. Outside of the front of the financial statements, uh, we get into or what we call our major funds. Those are the ones highlighted in the front of the financial statements. We then get into the notes to the financial statements. This gives you some more detailed information on all the significant asset and liability accounts of the city. 
Uh, for this year, there was one new GASB that was implementing, have to, implemented having to do with um, subscriptions, software subscriptions, where we recognize now a right of use asset related to those subscriptions and also a related liability that will be amortized over the, the life of the subscription. Over the last couple of years, there's been several different GASBs that have implement, been implemented. So, you know, it's been a, a big, you know, uh, I guess a burden on the finance departments, but uh, this is the most recent one so that we've implemented this year. The, uh, the city on page 44 is a list of the long-term liabilities of the city. The city is meeting all its obligations regarding its long-term liabilities. Um, all the other footnotes are very similar to what you've seen in prior years. Um, I won't get into the specifics of each, but uh, there's quite a bit of information included in the footnotes um, regarding all the significant assets and liabilities of the city. Then uh, later on in the, uh, after that, in the financial statements, there's some budget to actual comparisons for the, uh, for the major funds, the government, excuse me, governmental funds, um, and uh, any variances have been noted as well in the uh, footnotes. And then there's some detailed explanation of your net pension liability. This was implemented uh, about nine years ago. So we're working our way up to 10 years of history being presented um, starting on page 66. You can see the fluctuation of that uh, liability from year to year and the different inputs that go into that calculation that's uh, done by CalPERS each year. <laughs> Lastly is our non-major governmental funds. Uh, these are all the, what we consider non-major based on their their dollar activity. All of these funds are operating as intended as well. So nothing specific to highlight um, within those funds. Lastly, we issue a management report to the city council, just letting you know that we didn't have any difficulties in completing the audit. We didn't have any corrected or uncorrected misstatements, didn't have any disagreements with management and didn't have to consult with any uh, other outside independent accountants. Um, overall, the city, like I mentioned at the beginning, had a clean audit opinion. Um, we appreciate the, the work of the finance department and Jocelyn for helping us, especially with it being a first year audit, uh, getting us all the required information we needed to make that transition. Uh, we also worked closely with Price Page, your consultant firm, to implement some of those GASB standards. And uh, so overall, um, a good audit report for the, for the city of Lamore take any questions you have now at this time. Any questions from council? <clears throat> uh, first, I want to apologize for being late. And uh, sorry, I didn't catch your name. Uh, Ryan Jolly. Ryan, uh, did you perform the audit, Ryan? Yes. Okay. On the first paragraph of the uh, uh, letter to us, <clears throat> um, excuse me, the second par paragraph, you outlined that uh, uh, kind of a kind of a no harm clause. You you really don't. Uh, um, all you all you're looking for are not deficiencies per se, but um, misplaced or miscalculated uh, yes. issues. And we're looking. We are looking at internal control deficiencies where okay. there's not proper segregation of duties. Would Would you? Uh, I want to ask a hypothetical question. If if uh, um, would a city that is uh, uh, in a deficit mode um, be inclined to get the same type of audit letter with respect to uh, a good audit letter, no deficiencies, yeah. with a city that was uh, not in a deficit mode? Yes, they can still okay. receive one. Um, with respect to the uh, the different funds, that you audited was there, and when you compared last budget to this budget, um, do you comment at all to the to the finance staff or to the city manager about um, reserves in those funds? No, we don't specifically uh, address the budget. We will highlight the differences from budget to actual and and pull those out and highlight them in the financial statements, but we don't. Uh, directly comment on the on okay. the city's budgets. And then the last question I have is: I, I believe at the last meeting, the the my, my colleagues we approved a contract to invest the uh, funds that were in the uh, 
reserves or in the those reserves what is that going to be a part of uh, your audit next time um i'm not is that moving it into a different investment type or yes that would yeah we would Similar highlight that we, in the in the cash footnote yeah. that will be highlighted next year it's my understanding it was that we had something similar to that about three or four years ago okay so, and that, yeah. that would become a part that of will the, be reflected in the financial okay. thank you yeah. any other questions from council one it, it showed something about leases yeah um and it had something about golf course leases can we it was page around 46 47 Sorry, Marissa. It's kind of hard to. Yeah, that was a quick. Huh? That was a quick. Was a you had to be a speed reader. That was the. Um, I stopped reading after the. <laughs> it's good nighttime reading and put you to sleep. Um, that has to do with the new lease that was signed with, I think it's S is it SGM that has taken over the management of the golf course. Um, we've recognized a, a lease receivable and then a def unearned revenue, basically, because that will be recognized over the term of the lease. And the new lease was signed when? Uh, it says here in June, in fiscal year 2022. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's Sierra Golf Management. Yeah, Sierra, yeah. SGM, okay. Yeah. I thought you said something else. I was like, what? Okay. That's what this is referring to, the lease? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to make sure I saw golf lease and I didn't know if it was something else. Okay. I'm good. Any other questions or comments? Yes. Uh, Mr. Jolly, were, I, I missed it. Were you Ryan or are you Brian? I, Brian's my father. I'm Ryan. Okay, yeah, Ryan. So father, son you're, you're another one of those persons that I'm going to say uh, good job and I wouldn't want yours job at all. <laughs> and uh, also um, Jocelyn. Thank you. Thank you for what you do. I don't want your job either. <laughs> so I'm glad that you do it. And yeah, you this this whole your presentation or your review. I read most of it. It's a lot of information there. That That's was a why, lot. Yeah, I try to give a very high level overview. If we wanted to get into the details, we'd have to set up a separate meeting and spend hours going through it. I, I feel rude asking for a cliff note version next time, but is there such a thing? <laughs> so there is. There's a management's discussion and analysis that staff can prepare, and that would go in the uh, proceed the financial statements, and it kind of gives some comparative information. Um, just because of I think the some of the um, difficulties in staffing and you, right you now, provide that. one extra thing to put on them. So, but there is that ability to put that in there, and that would give. <laughs> You can make comments. Um, you can put some verbal information in there on just kind of the the, the variances that occurred from prior years to current years. I, don't, uh, I know what to ask for next year. Yeah, that would that could be added. That, that's our staff would do that, not their staff. Oh, yeah, yeah just for saying, clarification. Yeah, I thought he said he was going to do it. No, no, yeah, yeah, your staff prepares it. Just so you some know, cities are what right, Jocelyn, a lot of cities elect out of it. <laughs> Jocelyn, I don't want your job. <laughs> that's all I have. Thank you. Anyone else? We'll go ahead and open it up to the public. Is there any public comment on this uh, item? None online, Marissa. All right. Seeing none, thank you so much, sir, for your um, presentation. All right. Thank Appreciate you. It. Have a good evening. Have a good night. <clears throat> <clears throat> And item 1-2, 2023 Public Safety Annual Reports, Chief Kendall and Chief Jones. You feel more comfortable down there? Is that why you're going down there? 100%. 100%. You know, look, look you guys in the eyes and from that corner, it's just not going to work out. You can't see the faces we make. Absolutely. It. Well, good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, it's my pleasure to present... Uh, the 2023 annual report uh, for members of the community. This report was loaded up onto our department's website. You can view it at any time. Uh, it'll be up there for the remainder of the year. If you want a copy of it, um, we can do that for you. Uh, so Marissa, starting on page five, we're gonna kind of skim through this because it's 26 pages and I'm not gonna do that. Um, 
So starting with our operations division, uh, traffic enforcement saw a decrease from the 1,884 citations we issued in 22. Uh, in 23, officers issued a total of 1,732 citations. Uh, as you can see, the majority of this was parking citations, uh, which we had a, a large increase. If you remember, Councilmember Lyons talked about that last year. Um, in 23, officers issued 570 warning citations, 513 moving violations, and 325 parking citations. Uh, there were 104 traffic accidents in 2023. This was down from the 112 the year prior, and we've seen a continuing downward trend over the last four years. We also made 188 DUI arrests last year compared to the 145 the year prior. Uh, overall, calls for service were down. Um, LPD responded to 41,700 and 82 calls for service. Uh, response times for priority one calls for service was three minutes and 44 seconds. And we averaged the response time of four minutes and 38 seconds for all calls for service. Uh, on to crime stats. We made a total of 1,254 arrests uh, last year. This was down by about 533 from the year prior. Uh, felony cases were down from last year by 166 for a total of 621. And misdemeanor cases were somewhat significantly down by 568 for a total of 1,489. We saw a rise in the number of auto thefts uh, with a total of 100 reported stolen. We did see a decrease in the numbers of assaults, thefts overall, or larcenies, <laughs> burglaries, and robberies. <clears throat> um, moving on to the support division. The go back to the sex offenders there. Let's see that. Yes. Yeah. 74. They're increasing that, huh? Yeah, I, uh, I looked into that because obviously when you have kind of an increase of, I don't know, 20-something, um, it looks like we're just rolling more to, uh offenders out of prison and back out um they're ours they belong here they 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 were originally charged here within this county so they're ours let me just uh ask a question uh i get asked about occasionally uh from constituents and what's our relationship with ice if we find a person who's a illegal immigrant what do we do that's not uh, we don't um we don't have any interactions. Why not? We book them into the Kings County Jail. Any interactions would take place between Kings County Jail and that's... Does that's Kings it. County have any interaction with... I, I honestly, I could not answer that. I, I, I don't know. You don't know? Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't. All right. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, the detective division was assigned 215 cases. They had 63 arrests and had a clearance rate of 98.1%. Uh, we did have the two homicides in 2023. Detectives continue to work leads from uh, one of those and they've made arrest in the other case, which is awaiting to go to jury trial. Our evidence technician, Elizabeth Halstead, she falls within our um, detective division. She processed over 9,000 items of evidence last year. Our youth development officers continue to be busy at the schools. Officer Ortega was assigned to the high school. Uh, he was involved in 550 incidents and had 102 investigations. Officer Gonzalez is assigned to the elementary school district. He was involved in 930 incidents and investigated 118 cases. Our community service officers handled 3,482 calls for service last year. Uh, 387 property crimes, or I'm sorry, property maintenance, uh, 40 vehicle abatements, 416 weed abatements, and conducted 885 compliance checks. Animal Control handled 1,754 animal control calls for service. 
Our reserve officer program continues to be successful. Our reserve officers worked over 2,496 hours, responded to 2,392 calls for service, and made 152 arrests. One of our reserve police officers ultimately was hired on to a full-time position. Uh, the last thing I'll report out on tonight is our community outreach during 2023. Our PAL program uh, continues to grow as well as our Explorer program. Last year, we saw the largest crowd ever at our national night out. Yes. Over the holidays, we held another successful Santa for Seniors event and reached 59 families, 210 children uh, during our Reason for the Season event. And for present on patrol, we donated to 10 families with 26 children. <clears throat> we had, or we're currently we currently have 93 active neighborhood watch groups. Uh, Cars and Cops was a well-received new event last year, and we've already started planning for this year's. I'm sorry. Might have, might be asked to be out there in the heat again. <laughs> it's okay. Wait, uh, I thought you were going to change the date. No, I, no not yet. <laughs> uh, we continued our shoe drive, donating to over donating over 70 pairs of shoes as well as continuing our Lockspock program uh, during 2023. We ran a Citizens Academy last year and we were able to bring on additional volunteers in policing into the program. Without the help of the volunteers in policing who donated 3,360 hours uh, alone last year, <clears throat> uh, we would not have been as successful as we are. Uh, and then as always, I wanna thank Valerie our executive assistant for putting this report uh, all together. I always tell her there's no way she can do it uh, better than she did last year, but she proves me wrong every time. <laughs> so with that, I'll take uh, any questions. Any questions from council? I just want to point out that in that picture that's on the screen right now, Val is the one in the middle. Yes, I noticed that too. She knows her place. <laughs> <laughs> She's a big part of the department. Yeah. Yep. Um, I just want to uh, say thank you to Valerie, to you guys um, for all that you do. I know I, I, I feel maybe I say it too much, but not enough. Um, we are definitely blessed to have the police department that we have here in town. Every single one of your programs makes an impact on the community. That is just there's you can't even place a value to it. It's it makes Lamore Lamore. Um, so I just want to thank you guys for everything that you do, even above and beyond your regular day jobs. I see regularly <clears throat> yourself, other police officers, volunteering your time to coach um, baseball, softball, soccer. You guys are just out there doing it and because you care about the, the community. Um, so I just want to recognize that and thank you guys for everything that you do professionally and and personally, thank you. Thank you, I appreciate it. <clears throat> um, if I could, Mr. Reed, did you have a comment? I apologize, I should have opened it up for public comment. Sorry about that, Chief. I'll meet Brian a little more. I just have one question and there's no specific meaning behind it. I'm not casting the aspersions or anything else. I just wanna know, is the general downtrend, downtrend in crime a result of uh, a shortage of police staff, or is it just that uh, we're doing a really good job? Well, we're doing a really good job, obviously. <laughs> yeah, and, and Ms. Reed, I, I might need some clarification on that question. Like in, a, in all categories, except for auto theft, uh, we're down. Um, the, if you look at our reported rapes, those are up, but that's, kind of how the state is now capturing our rapes. Those don't actually reflect a, you know, a, good job, bad job. Right. And, and it, it's, it's very difficult. It's, it's, um, it's, it's, different. You know, to stats are very subjective. I, I mean, it's hard to argue that we're down across the board um, in every category, you know, for the last, you know, I don't know, four years. I went back to 2014 to see when the last time we were up over 100 auto thefts. 
Um, and that's when it was. I mean, I got to 2014, 2013, we were up over uh, 100. Um, and it's just anomalies. It's if you, if on, I mean, with our stats and with our numbers, it's really just anomalies. Uh, it, it's, it, it's the, the 2014 Kias that they figured out they can steal in about, you know, 20 seconds. And, and if you go back to 2014, it's the uh, 2002 Honda Civics, you know, um, or the, now it's the, uh, the 2000 model Chevy Silverados. Yeah. I mean, you can steal those in about 20 seconds. So we're just, it, it's always up and down. You know, the, the year we were up in Larsenies, uh, it was because they figured out catalytic converters were, um, you know, worth gold. And now the legislature has kind of picked up and made it a little bit more difficult to recycle those. And we're seeing those numbers come back down. So I think we just deal with it now. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Chief Jones. <clears throat> Good evening. I'm David Jones, Chief of the Lamore Fire Department. My report will be nowhere near as long as Mike's, but please bear with me. <laughs> um, I have a 23 annual fire report. <clears throat> Lamore Volunteer Fire Department is comprised of 33 volunteer members, 10 of which are certified EMTs. 24 hold their firefighter one certificate, 19 hold their firefighter two certificate. LVFD strives to provide the community with the best fire protection service possible. <clears throat> In 2023, Lamore Volunteer Fire Department responded to a total of 1,896 incidents. The chart below shows a breakdown of all the incidents for 23 for 2023. Uh, for service calls, we had 41. For training, we had 99. Uh, we had 41 canceled calls, uh, 56 hazardous conditions, 147 false alarms, 49 fire calls, and 1,463 medical aid calls. <clears throat> so it's quite a bit of medical aid calls. So with that, any questions? Any questions from council? Stewart. <laughs> I just think it's amazing that... Uh, uh, I, I never would have guessed that you had that many medical calls. That's a fire department. Yes, that's just amazing. Which, which is why exactly a great job. We were hoping for that new dispatch center. Yes. To eliminate eliminate quite a, few. A, a lot of that. So we have more EMTs. Well, what they do is, our hope is the dispatch center will have a EMT on site, so they can distinguish or uh, decipher whether it's life-threatening to where we need to go or just a nosebleed or yeah. somebody hurt their toe. Gotcha. So that would help us out tremendously. <clears throat> Any other questions from council? <clears throat> I'd just like to also thank you guys for everything that you do. I see um, there seems to be more, I know it's not the only things that you guys do, you guys don't usually toot your own horn, no. um, but the seeing the Facebook posts of all that you guys do in the community, um, just, I hope you guys do more of that, um, not to toot your own horn, but just to show people what it is that you guys do when you're not out doing those calls and everything. Um, but also to thank the, our volunteers that do do that. I see you guys go out um, often and you guys aren't just sitting down at the fire station yeah. waiting for a call and jumping in and going. You guys are leaving your lives yes. and whatever's going on at that moment to go and help people in the community. Um, and you guys do it quickly. So um, thank you guys for all that you do, um, volunteering your time and your talents for that. So just want to thank you guys and, and let you know that we appreciate you. Well, we're pretty proud of what we do. So thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Is there any public comment for Chief Jones? <laughs> Seeing none, we'll go ahead and move to item 1 3 utility billing implementation update. Ms. Valdez, we got you two times tonight. So, just going over a quick follow up of um, where we've been in the last month um, our misapplied payments. And are you? <clears throat> Can you pull the microphone down? I'm sorry. Thanks. So our misapplied payments, um, we have seen a significant reduction in the misapplied payments uh, across 
customer accounts. Um, we're continuing to make improvements with the crosswalks um, and everything's starting to go a lot smoother. There was a misstatement last visit with the utility billing regarding there was 900 accounts in error. That was simply a report that we pulled that had credit balances. There were over 900 accounts with credit balances. So not that we identified there were 900 accounts with errors. So I just wanted to clarify that. Um, but we did take a look at those. Um, we got through about 600. It takes a lot of time to get through each individual account. We got through 600 and identified 92 that possibly have an issue that we're looking into further and making those fixes as we find them, okay? Um, the payments online, we're still kind of in the same spot as we were last month. We do have legal looking into a couple of options for us um, to do an early termination or offer multiple payment options. So we'll have another update about that soon. Okay, and as far as um, the late fees on the credit balance accounts, um, we were able to meet with the city of Kalinga finance staff. They are on a different platform than the city of Lemoore, and they did implement several years back. Um, so it wasn't a total help, but we were able to bounce ideas um, off each other. So we did find a fix for the late fees with that, and hopefully that will um, show a reduction in the months going forward. In our payment plan applications, we are working with the Tyler Support Tech team. Um, I have met with them a couple of times and we're continuously following up with them daily on the tickets that we have issued with them. We still have several out. Um, it does appear that there is a development issue. It's not only our city that is having these same issues. Other cities have identified the same problems. So they're taking those, combining those um, support tickets and seeing if we can't get a development fix at this point. So it continues to work on that as well. With the corrections that we've already made, we're starting to see a decrease in our traffic in the utility office. We're starting to get back to a normal routine in there. Um, the phone calls have slowed down, the traffic in the office has slowed down. So um, finance staff is getting through the work. If you have any issues, you can still please give us an email and we can have the time to review your account and get back to you. And lastly, we do have an update. Um, AutoPay is now live, effective today. We were able to turn that on. So just one more option for residents to make their payments. It's a free of charge um, uh, payment option for them to use. Go online to the CSS online portal enter your EFT banking information there and you can start next month. Nice. Okay, that's all I have for today. Any questions from council? Mr. Warner? I got a question. I'm oh, sorry, are you getting the support you need from Tyler Tech? Um, yes and no. It depends on the tickets that we issue to them. Some of them, they have been able to turn around the same day. Um, I'll get phone calls and other issues it's I'm at their mercy of them getting back to me. So it it just depends. So do they think our system has it been implemented or from their point of view or? Yes. They do. Huh? Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from council? What's the longest it's taken Tyler to fix a ticket? Mm -hmm. um, these tickets I've had since the beginning of January. Mm -hmm. And they're all marked critical, which are supposed to be 48 hour turnaround time, but they have staffing. I was made aware that they have staffing issues as well. They are severely short staffed. Um, yeah. It doesn't help you. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any public comment or questions on this item? Thank you, Jocelyn. Thank you. Good job, Jocelyn. <clears throat> I don't want your job. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. <laughs> There's no ceremonial presentation, so we'll move on to department and city manager reports. Chief. Did you do public Whoops. Let's go back up. Public comment. Public comment will be in accordance with the attached policy. This time is reserved for members of the audience to address the city council on items of interest that are not on the agenda and are within the subject matter jurisdiction of the council. It is recommended that speakers limit their comments to three minutes each and it is requested that no comments be made during this period on items on the agenda. 
the council is prohibited by law from taking any action on matters discussed that are not on the agenda. Prior to addressing the council, any handouts for council will be provided to the city clerk for distribution to the council and appropriate staff. The public will have an opportunity to comment on items on the agenda once the item has been called and the mayor opens the item for the public. Is there any public comment? Mr. Reed. <clears throat> I'm just curious, since we passed the thing last time about the uh, uh, investment of the funds, has any action happened on that? Yeah, so there's an item on consent that's just gonna be a standard item um, allowing individuals named within the city to work with the investment companies, but Kevin will be better able to give you an update when he gets back from vacation. Great, okay, thank you. Also, uh, are we gonna get in? Uh, an annual report from the uh, golf course. Mm. Sorry. That's okay. Yeah, we'll we'll check in with Kevin. I think that that was promised mm. an annual report. So yeah. okay, Thank I'll you. remind Kevin. Thank you, sir. Any other public comment? No. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and move on to department and city manager reports. I was just trying to make it shorter because Stuart wants to go across the street. Sorry. <laughs> uh, first up, Frank Rivera. Good evening, Mayor and Council members. Just have a follow up, a couple of follow up updates. Um, a couple of weeks back, I mentioned that well number seven went down. Uh, so we uh, hired a contractor. We did a video and a gyroscopic survey. Basically, what that is is getting a, a plumb bob down the center of the pipe and then measuring the distance from the center to the pipe to see if we had any subsidence. The video showed no additional subsidence, which is good. So now we just got to figure out what caused the, the two bowls to break. So we're going to deal with the contractor uh, who pulled the, the pump and bowls out to figure out how to fix that. So that's the next step, but it's a good thing that our our well is not collapsing. Uh, secondly, our, our crack bill contractor is mobilizing again tonight. They'll be doing some uh, night crack filling just to avoid traffic. Um, so they'll probably be out here uh, the next couple of nights, and uh, they will be doing some um, some touch-ups and, um, and then just some additional cracks that weren't addressed. Um, just remember, the, the, crack, the ideal cracks are between a quarter to one inch is like your ideal crack. Anything larger than that is kind of a waste of material, but it is still better than nothing. But there will be some cracks that are too big for crack filling. We'll have to deal with those with a different type of application. It's a totally different type of um, crack fill material. It has more granular uh, additives to it than what they're using now. So once it can do with the crack filling, then we have our striper who will follow back and finish the striping on Lamar Avenue. And then we'll put reflectors on 19th Avenue. Uh, hopefully that will be done within the uh, spring break period. So. Will Lamar Avenue also have the reflectors or no? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> all, oh, quick sorry. question with you for that contract on the crack fill. Um, I, I meant to go look back at it, but I haven't done it yet. And since you mentioned it, I, I thought that they were supposed to go all the way to Glendale. Was that? No, we had, we had a, uh, an amount to work with. So okay. based on linear footage, that's the distance. That we, yeah. So no, so we will city staff will be addressing the, the cracks are that are from, what is it? Burlwood. Uh, Burlwood yeah. to Glendale. Okay. We will be doing that ourselves. Okay. okay. Do, do we have a crack filling machine? Yes, we do. Okay. Yeah. We're just, we just been short staffed. That's Nick. No, no, yeah. yeah I just I know if we had one. Yeah. Anything else? That's all I had. Oh, thank you guys for filling in that pothole on the antelope. Yeah. <laughs> we couldn't find anything other than water got in the crack. And so, yeah, it was. So taking care of you. Okay. Yeah. Hey, you. Uh, I'm sorry. Were you doing D Street too or no? I, I... D Street will be an overlay, um, and that'll happen. Uh, plans will be done this fiscal year, but the actual work will be done next fiscal year, which will be basically an overlay, which is remove grind and overlay from yeah um, Lamore Avenue to the canal to the canal, right? Adding some curb and gutter, missing curb and gutter um, along the way, uh, that kind of work. So, and then we'll be doing the two. Um, there's two radiuses: the one at Popeyes, and then there's one at the opposing intersection. That's a rural 
tight in, uh, radius, mm -hmm. we'll be increasing the radius to make it easier to turn so you're not jumping those curbs. Nice. Yeah. Anything <clears throat> else? Cool. Okay. Next up is Ray Greenley. It's your time to shine. <laughs> yeah, he's already. Evening, Madam Mayor and Council Members. Um, happy to report that Panda <coughs> Express has electricity now. They are up and up and running. So, um, I don't have a time frame when they're going to open. I spoke to the contractors today. They said it's going to take whatever amount of time based on availability. Right. So almost feel like we need the biggest throw hurdle is jumped over. Yes. So. Yes. It's good. So how about the uh, how about the traffic signal? Is that going to affect when they get that fixed? Do the lights go out? And uh, right. Uh, I spoke with Frank today and they're going to go ahead and uh, put the lights back on the normal setting, yeah. take it off the flash and then remove the stop signs. Are they finished? Because there was that big green box there. It's no longer there, but Correct. they didn't they move it, it anywhere else. No, they put a vault in. So oh, it's okay. down yeah. below. Perfect. Even better. Yeah. yeah. So finally, yeah. Good. Yeah. Finally, exactly. Finally. Any other questions? That's nope. all I have. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. Uh, the only other thing that I have um, out of the police department. I don't typically comment on cases, but I think it's uh, right to recognize our new Detective Sergeant Moritz and his team for this uh, appreh uh, apprehension that you saw on the news um, with this shooting suspect. They uh, started that case Friday morning, early Friday morning, and worked throughout the weekend to track and locate and arrest this suspect. And so I just want to... Make sure he knows he did a real good job leading that team. That's Thank you. Job. Thank you, sir. We'll go ahead and move on to consent calendar. Items considered routine in nature are placed on the consent calendar. They will be considered and voted upon in one vote as a as one item unless a council member or member of the public requests individual consideration. <clears throat> 4-1, approval minutes, regular meeting, March 5th, 2024. 4-2, approval purchase of two new refuse trucks in the amount of $785,587.67. Approval Budget Amendment Affordable Housing Sustainable Communities Project. 4-4. Approval Change Order Lamore Police Dispatch Tower. 4-5. Approval 2024-02 Authorizing Investment of Monies in the Local Agency Investment Fund. <clears throat> Item 4-6, approval re resolution 2024-03, requesting and consenting to con consolidation of elections and specifications of the election order and resolution 2024-04, <clears throat> requesting the Kings County Board of Supervisors to authorize the county registrar of voters to render specific services to the city of Lamar. 4-7, approval resolution 2024-05, regarding public transit needs within the city of Lamar and authorizing the filing of a claim for Transportation Development Act funds. Is, would any member of council like to pull any of those items? Yes. Which ones would you like to pull, sir? Uh, I have a number of them. Uh, okay. 4-2, 4-3, Maybe I should have asked you which ones you didn't want to pull. That would be better. <laughs> One and six so far. Four, six, and seven. So four, one, you don't want to pull. No. Or four, six, was that there. pull or not pull? Four, six? That's fine. Okay. You want to pull it? <clears throat> no. no. Oh, you, oh, okay. I didn't but... Anyone from the public uh, want to pull any of these items? Let's just pull four, one. Just get one. <laughs> just get... Okay, so then I'll entertain a motion to accept the consent, uh, except four, dash, one, and four, dash, six. Motion. Second. We have a motion by Council Member Orth and a second by Council Member Lyons. Council Member Orth? Yes. Council Member Lyons? Yes. Council Member Garza? Yes. Council Member Gornick? Yes. And I vote yes. Five in favor, so that passes. 4 2. Did you have any specific questions? Yeah. I, uh, this deals with the refuse trucks. And uh, also, I know we've had a lot of discussion with the community with respect to our uh, 
on RFP and uh, how does this relate to that? So I know that was part of the RFP that went out and some of the individuals responded to that. So. That's oh. right. So just for your information, um, <clears throat> we did uh, put a, what's the correct term? Um, a hold on the RFP. So. And what does that mean to the community when you put a hold on it? Our trash truck drivers are going to continue picking up our trash until further notice. Okay, we just need to say that in plain English so we don't get phone calls from people about sure. what we're doing with the RFP. That's it. Okay. So, so we're, we ordered two new fire trucks. Uh, fire trash trucks. trucks. Oh, okay. <laughs> trash trucks. Sounds two good. New trash trucks. And this money's coming from enterprise. Enterprise, enterprise fund. fund. Was they were already budgeted. budgeted yeah. It was budgeted. Some of it last year and some of it this year. Right. Correct. Right. But what about these fire trucks? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no fire truck. Aren't you glad I pulled this? Right. <laughs> is there any other questions for, on that item? Is there any questions or comments from the public on that item? This has got to be the easiest item I've ever had pulled. Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> okay, no. Well, we should make it difficult. Oh, yeah. um, they also, are we looking at the equipment? I think it's called something like GPS. Are these going to be the GPS? equipped the, the gps stuff? the gps items that you're referring to is a separate software um trucks don't come attached with that that's something that we are doing um so kind of off that there is the sb 1383 grant that i just submitted um for approval so we're just waiting to see if my amount was approved and then we will go after the as our refuse department has called it the cadillac of softwares okay and hopefully get that implemented how much was that grant for? Do you remember off the top of your head? Um, I believe we were approved for seventy-seven thousand dollars and seventy-seven thousand and one. Up to, or no, that seventy-seven thousand. Yep, and that will do all the not cover the entire software. Okay, what will it cover? Uh, most of it, most but of the it. implementation of these softwares because of the equipment and just the the rollout is typically like two years worth of the software. Um, so that was the hardest part. So if we can get a grant to cover that, we're, we're fine. Okay. Sorry, a little off topic from the, the trucks, but yeah. Okay. Sure, sorry. I, I just kind of looked over at Mary and she kind of gave me a look. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Any other questions? Do you have, it, does that answer that for the software? Yeah. Okay. Any other questions on this item? I'll uh, entertain a motion to approve 4 2. Motion. Second. I have a motion by Councilmember Orth, a second by Councilmember Lyons. Councilmember Orth? Yes. Councilmember Lyons? Yes. Councilmember Garza? Abstain. Councilmember Gornick? Yes. And I vote yes. One abstention, four yeses. Um, so it passes. <clears throat> uh, 4 3, approval budget amendment for what did you need to know about that one? Uh, th is this is for the project on the three-story units that we have on? On Oleander? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So this budget amendment, I'll just kind of give you the background. This budget amendment is just for us to transfer funds over to track the project. Most of this project is grant reimbursable through the self-help, but we do need to create the CIP and track the, be able to pay for things to get reimbursed for it. So this is just creating that so we can track those expenditures. So you track it, is, is this grant going to re refund us? yes it's a reimbursed yeah. okay a reimbursal grant okay did it say that in the line item that we were i think so i think i yes on the financial considerations yeah. okay thank you uh any other questions from council any questions from the public on four dash three i mean two i mean three okay i'll go ahead and entertain a motion motion Second. I have a motion by Councilmember Garza and a second by Councilmember Lyons. Councilmember Garza? Yes. Councilmember Lyons? Yes. Councilmember Orth? Yes. Councilmember Gornick? Yes. And I vote yes. Passes 5-0. 4-4, uh, four four, change order for Lamore Police Dispatch Tower. What was your question there, sir? What was it for and for how much? So this is a change order in $22,000. Um, this is for the, it's for extra excavation. We're going to expand the pad in which the tower sits on. Um, so that's just for this additional labor time and materials. 
and and that came from the recommendation of the contractor that came from the final design but this recommendation actually comes from our soils engineer so uh separate from the contractor okay thank you mm -hmm. any other questions on the the dispatch tower any questions from the public i'll entertain a motion a motion I have a motion by Councilmember Lyons and a second by Councilmember Gornick. Councilmember Lyons? Sure, yes. <laughs> Councilmember Gornick? Yes. Councilmember Garza? Yes. Councilmember Orth? Yes. And I vote yes, five in favor, so it passes. Did you check it that? Five dash, four dash five. I know you did. Investment monies, authorized invest, investment monies. Did you have a, what was your question there? So um, the, uh, this, this item, Actually, you discussed at the last meeting, mm -hmm. right? And it's in response to the uh, to the amount of money that was available in our uh, enterprise accounts uh, that was not invested. Is that correct? So, what this item is doing specifically is LAFE, which is the local agency investment fund. It needed updated information um, as to which agency officials can transfer money between LAFE and the city of Lemoore's checking account. So, the resolution would allow the mayor, the city manager, the finance director, and the finance manager to order deposits or withdrawals in LAFE. And so, that's all it is, is LAFE is requested it's updated. It's not dealing with the gentleman who gave us the presentation. No, that's different. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's there if we want to use it. Correct. Yeah. And then the city is investing with LAIF. Yeah. yeah. They just needed updated information. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions from council? And any, any questions from the public? Seeing none, I'll go ahead and entertain a motion. Motion. Second. Second. <laughs> <laughs> that was a tie. I have a motion by Councilmember Lyon. Johnny gets it. A second by Councilmember Garza. <laughs> Councilmember Lyon. Yes. Councilmember Garza. Yes. Councilmember Orth. Yes. Councilmember Gornick. Yes. And I vote yes. So four dash five passes. I think that's the first time we've fought over motions. <clears throat> uh, four dash seven. Did you have a specific question on that one? I don't think you pulled it. I don't think I pulled it. You didn't pull that one. Okay. Well, we'll I'll entertain a motion, motion to uh to approve, yeah, approve four seven. Okay. Second. A second by motion by Orth or Councilmember Orth. Second by Councilmember Lyons. Councilmember Orth? Yes. Councilmember Lyons. Yes. Councilmember Garza. Yes. Councilmember Gornick. Yes. And I vote yes. So it passes five in favor. There's no public hearings. Moving on to new business. Six dash one. Report and recommendation, city council boards and commissions. Ms. Avalos. Good evening, Mayor and Council members. Um, so there was one board and commission that we missed at the last council meeting, which was the Homelessness Collaborative um, Committee that Nathan sat on previously. Um, so we need to um, appoint someone to that committee and they meet the third Monday of every month at 1 30. And if um the Monday falls on a holiday, they push it to the Tuesday. And those meetings are held at KCAO in I Hampton. I nominate Kevin. <laughs> He's not even here. <laughs> you gotta show up. <laughs> Did they say if, uh, if it's a staff member or a council member for that position? I think, it has to be I think it's either or. No, well, if Nathan did it. Well, Nathan also filled council member positions because the previous council didn't have enough of you to fill oh, those, remember? That's right. Yeah, so that's why that's why I just asked for clarification. Oh, should be like a... Yeah, I think it's mm -hmm. usually staff. Um, there are some council members. Yeah. I know there was like... Elected on uh, like Jeff Garner, I think sits on it. Um, oh, it have to be elected. Kings yeah. County staff. It doesn't have to be elected. I know it does. Most of them are. Yeah. Any I, suggestions? Yeah, we'll leave it for the city manager. But does anyone else want it? Second that. No, no. no. Mary, Mary, do you want? Would you yeah, like to do it? 
Yeah. Who who motioned? I'm sorry. Mr. Lyons. Wow. And who was second? Wow. Oh, yeah. Is there any public comment or any Sorry. public input on He's not even here to defend himself? The uh so did you want the interim city manager or did you want want to wait until there's like a permanent city manager? That's that's the issue, public. right? Like because um whoever they would have to fill out an application that would need to be approved by the board of supervisors. Yeah. But we table this and let the man defend himself. Yeah, I like the idea of waiting until we get yeah. the manager. I'll, I'll retract my motion. But unless also, Mary, unless Mary wants to do it. You want to retract your second one? You want yeah, to retract, retract my second? second. Okay. Let's just let's so let's take... we get a regular. I would be rank. happy to do it, but it's probably cheaper <laughs> <laughs> if you have the city manager. Oh, you want to do it pro bono? <laughs> is there a? I is there our council there. members? I, who did you speak to? Was it he was a council member from the here? vice mayor? From yeah, here, for Hanford, Hanford. Yeah. He's on there. Um, my only concern is us not having a seat at the table until we appoint a permanent city manager. Well, do you want to do it? Sure, he has like five. I mean, if I have to, I will, but- um, no, I can't make that. There's no way. Garza, somebody turn off his microphone for a second. <laughs> um, that's that's my only concern is we don't know when what that timeline looks like. It could be months. Mm -hmm. Um so that's my concern. Do you guys not share that concern? Not enough to appoint myself. Okay. Yeah, I know I can't do 130. All right. Not on a Monday. There is a virtual option, but voting members need to be present. Right. So just FYI. Could even do that. I will go ahead and uh put my name in there until we get a um permanent city manager and then we'll discuss um potentially switching. All right, I second I second your motion. <laughs> it, it wasn't a motion. I just put my name out there. Well we all Sound like a motion. We all, <laughs> you don't it you have consensus, so you're yeah. fine. We agree. Thanks, guys. So I will no, email you. you the application. Okay. <laughs> All right, now moving on to uh, 6-2, report and recommendation, appointment of a two-person committee for the city manager recruitment, Ms. Avalos. Okay, so we as of March 11th, we did fly the city manager recruitment. Um, so Kevin wanted me to bring this item so we can have two council members sit on a committee to review applications. I'd I am like definitely on interested in yeah, that one. I'd like to be on it. Me too. Well, but why only two out of curiosity? Brown Act. For the Brown Act. If there's more than two, then it's going to be a notice meeting. Mm -hmm. how, how many applications is there? I don't have that number. Oh, okay. Take a guess at it. <laughs> so, there's two different ways applicants can apply. So they can either email uh, Mr. Northcraft or they can submit um, applications through NeoGov. So I'm not, sh I don't have access to his email. So I don't know how many people have emailed him. And so I don't how have how many do you know of thus far? Oh. Oh. Stuart. No. What are you, Perry Mason? Yeah. Through NeoGov, I'm being told there's 10. Okay. Well, so that's different. That changes things. Yeah. Well, that's, that's all I was looking for. To what? To continue doing? I mean, is that, I'm kind of thinking, I know. Kevin wants to do this, and I'm and I'm for it. But why couldn't we just come up with like we did the interim? We all sit here, do a special meeting, or we do it a light day, and do a study session after a regular council. And we we all you could do that. You could do that. I you know if you end up getting fifty or hundred applications, you might want to reconsider. Well, but, yeah, but we could do very we're, similar, we're, and it will be closed session. Ten. We could just appoint two people, and if we need them, we need them. If we don't, we don't. That's it. And we're done. We've at least done it. Well, I I kind of agree with David. I mean, if we if we did it as a as a group as a whole to appoint the interim, I'd like to at least have a conversation with uh, Kevin about it. And so maybe table this until he comes back. Yeah, and just yeah. Kevin, okay. do you think if if you wouldn't mind us? all being together doing it yeah well i'm glad you show up sometimes you got some good ideas even though you're late it's all good 
Yeah, yeah because I, I like the idea. I'd like to go back I just, and get those fire trucks again. Uh, <laughs> I like the idea. I just don't know if we, I mean, if we only have 10, I mean. So it's not have, like we have consensus to go ahead and table this item? Yes. Okay. Good. So you won't need to open it to the public because when it comes back, they'll have an opportunity to comment. Yeah, good idea. Good idea. Thank good you. Job, Frank. Moving on to city council reports and requests. Mr. Garza. I have none tonight. Mr. Lyons. I, I just want to thank you, know, Chief and Dave Jones for their reports as well. Who else? There's another one. Oh, yeah. The Mr. Jolly and uh, Jocelyn for, for that situation. And uh, that's that's all I have. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Mr. Worth. Uh, I, too, uh, want to thank the police department for doing such a great job. They always do a great job. But Friday morning to get that text at 730 in the morning that, unfortunately, we had an incident. But to find out that they caught, I don't know if I can use the word scumbag, but find the scumbag fast enough, that's pretty good. Um, bravo to all your staff. Um, you know, the reports, that's, that's a lot of work to put all that information in. So... Great job, fire department. Great job on the reports too. Even though he only had a page, but you know we got him here. That's good. Well, we, she didn't scroll through it all. There was more to it. Oh, was there? I was okay. kind of surprised. That's all he wanted to share. <laughs> and uh, it sounds like the billing department is is doing good and found some good errors and fixing some things. And good job on the uh, the auto payment. That that's that's going to make our military very 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 happy. I think so. Um, and everybody else that does it, my wife included. Um, uh, uh, everybody else, Rec, uh, Frank, you guys are doing some great job sealing the all that stuff. That's great. Everything's going good. So, um, I, I don't know if this is the time to ask, but uh, now nah, I'll ask privately. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Mr. Gornick. Uh, yes, just a report from the. South Fork Kings GSA, which I sit on on behalf of the city and its residents. Um, this is getting real uh, scary with respect to the groundwater issues. And it's a, uh, I, I'm going to uh, request the mayor and Kevin and, and I, we have a discussion that we need to, uh, we need to put our oar in the water here in terms of sending a letter with respect to our concern. I, I have a couple of concerns that um, there um, is kind of a rush to judgment on meeting these deadlines. And I think really what has to happen is that, um, you know, we've had a couple of years of drought. We've had a couple of years of uh, pandemic. And um, that has disrupted a lot of communities and a lot of industries. And farming is certainly one of them. And... Um, yeah, um, there really hasn't been the ample amount of time to really study this. And I think, you know, for the the, uh, the GSA is, is um, as you may have read in the paper, there's about five or six of us that are uh, can get into probation and cause some real issues for a lot of the communities on, on the southern part of the valley. And uh, we need to express our concern that, you know, we need to go slow here. It's not it is about ag, but it's also about communities that get their drinking water from the wells. And um, so everybody everybody has a stake in this issue and, and it needs to be expressed. And it needs to be more than just the, the farmers speaking out. The cities need to get involved in it. The county needs to get involved in it. And the the water board needs to understand that it's, it's just not about ag. Those uh, family farms are... Uh, fighting against larger farms, I mean, humongous farms as well. And uh, so there's a there's a real battle here and we're spending all kind of money, but nobody's getting any more water, which is, the, that's the craziest thing. And uh, so we need to express that appropriately to these individuals and, and we need to do it soon because the meetings are coming up very quick in April. And uh, so as soon as Kevin gets back, we need to talk about that. Can I, can I ask one question? Maybe you know. Okay. Our wells, are they drawing from A zone, B zone, or C zone? 
Sorry. Well, That's okay. It's not an agendized item. So the response needs to be really quick. Can't be a discussion. I, I don't know if it's own. I just know we're 1,500 feet. So I think it's, I don't know. 1,500? Yeah. 1,500. So, That's all I need to yeah. know. Yeah. But there's a lot of farmers who are drawn from the A zone, a -zone which yes. is shallow. Shallow. Under, and, under 150 feet or something like that. Or under and you'd be feet. surprised at how many, you know, you do away with those farms and you do away with cities. Yeah. And, yeah. Anyway. So that's my report, <clears throat> succinct. And, uh... Thank you, sir. Sorry, Mary. <laughs> um, uh, I just want to add to what you were saying. Um, our, all of our communities around here are very focused on ag. Um, so what happens to them happens to us. Absolutely. It's trickled down, so Absolutely. it definitely affects everyone. Um, for my report, I want to just say that I, I had the pleasure of attending the first soccer games for um, indoor soccer, which if you haven't checked that out, just even I don't have kids in there, but it's fun to watch. Um, those kids, uh, some of them play their little hearts out and some of them watch the ball go by, but it's all good. They're they're still learning and um, it's just it's nice to see the community community coming out and doing things and seeing the kids enjoying what they're doing and all of that. So kudos to the the recreation department for putting that on and uh, having a great a great first day. And I guess the the last this last week was soccer games and pictures. So I stayed away from that probably very fun, chaotic time, but um I'm looking forward to going back and watching some more games. Um Kevin and I uh city uh I don't even know what to call them. Um interim city manager. Kevin and I uh, met with Chuck Kenny last week just to discuss some maybe potential things that we may be able to do with the city. Um, we were basically, well, I was basically told that's not going to happen, but um, good conversations with with him about other things going on in the city and different grant opportunities and why we can or cannot get some of those things. So um, it was a very productive meeting, even despite that. Um, I did attend the South San Joaquin Valley Division board meeting for League of California Cities last week. Um, we discussed the upcoming golf tournament. Um, if you guys uh, are interested in, in attending that, it is during the day. I think it's on a Friday. Um, it's a it's fun time. You get to, you know, network and, and um, play golf. Um, Chief's pretty good, by the way. Um, he went last year. Uh, it's a it's a it's a good event if you want to do that. It is completely free for um, us to attend if that is something that you're interested in. Also, the leadership summit is coming up next month. Um, I believe that all the tickets are sold out, but there there is a wait list. Um, so if anybody, well, I don't think anybody's interested, or you probably would have signed up. But um, just want to reiterate with League of Cities, we do have a membership that we pay for that um, includes a lot of webinars or different um, <clears throat> online uh, resources to get information. Um, so I hope that everybody is is uh, using that to its full effect um, to be able to help do our jobs better. I attended a webinar this morning um, on how to be uh, effective in advocacy for our city um, with the legislature. Um, so that was very informative. Um, so I'll stop saying, um, sorry about that. Uh, next this Friday, actually, I'll be attending the League of California cities, housing, communication, and economic development policy committee meeting in Burbank. So, uh, I'll report back on that. If there's anything that comes out of that, uh, Christy Bailey and I will be attending ICSC Monterey next week. We had a briefing today with retail strategies kind of going into that, um, that uh, conference on some things to focus on and and what we have available. Uh, so I think that's gonna be a productive uh, conference for us there. Uh, just wanted to mention that the Easter event for rec department is March 30th. They still are accepting donations of candy and eggs. Um, I was gonna throw out a challenge last time to council. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm competitive, everybody knows that. Um, so I was going to throw out a little challenge to you guys, but I forgot. So I've been doing my own little challenge, but if anybody wants to join me, feel free. I am keeping track of the number of eggs that I, I'm buying and 
stuffing and donating. So I'll just throw it out there. Um, I believe they're taking donations until the 27th. So feel free to donate to that if you like, and definitely come out and, and enjoy the festivities. So with that, we'll go ahead and move to closed session. We have uh, one item, government code section 54957.6. Conference with Labor Negotiator Agency Designated Representatives Mary Lerner, City Attorney and Michael Kindle, Acting City Manager, Employee Organizations, General Association of Service Employees, Lamore Police Officers Association, Lamore Police Sergeants Unit, Police Professional Pro Professional Services Bargaining Unit, and unrepresented. Unrepresented. So we'll go ahead and move into closed session. 